All right. Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. He's a level three whiskey sommelier. He's a mooch. He's a little drunk right now. Look, you see, this this is what drunk people do. No, this is presents. So sober people don't do. No, that. this is the thing called presents. You've never heard that? Explain this. Oh yeah, one of my best friends, Ryan All's house. Anytime he said presents, he goes, hmm, presents. So in my mind, this means, hmm, things we're going to do that are interesting today. In my mind, this means. You don't need to watch this video, because <laughs> these guys are weird as hell. That's true. Here we go. Connemara. Hmm? Connemara. Irish peated whiskey. Connemara. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Connemara. <laughs> Pagin, you're going to have to email in and tell us how to pronounce this correctly. Like, Pagin Riley is our Irish. pretentious... Affected Connemara. Connemara. I didn't trolled anyway. Did. All right. This is one of the only peated Irish whiskeys. Now, a hundred years ago, a peated Irish whiskey was pretty common because they, like Scotland, used peat to yeah. dry things. No, you think right? Irish whiskey. You don't think peat. No, no, no. No. But in since the 1800s, things have gotten a little more uh, blended grain whiskeys and things. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember my bitching about how people get all upset about bourbon and MGP. But Ireland's been doing this for 50 to 100 years already. Yeah. Which is using one location to make, a you know, 100 different brands. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a Kilbagan distillery product. Okay. So is Kilbagan their version of MGP? No, no, no. Actually, uh, that would probably be Middleton. Middleton. Middleton is the most dominant producer of Irish whiskey. Okay. Um, but now Irish whiskey is having a total renaissance and their distilleries are popping up all over. Mm. Now, at one point, Ireland had over a th uh, like three or four hundred to five hundred distilleries, and uh, and then it crashed down to one during the potato famine and the, in the early 1900s. What was the one? Uh, it was Middleton, and that's why Middleton oh. has become the producer for so many yeah, brands. Yeah. Okay. Right now, the, people may argue the difference between MGP and Middleton is that Middleton survived. And because it was the only thing that could, right. whereas MGP started for for a whole bunch of entrepreneurs to start whiskey companies without having to wait for the aging problem. Sure. And for people, yeah, for people who haven't been part of the MGP conversation, it's basically this huge, giant facility, Lawrenceburg, Indiana, that makes what is it? About half of the whiskeys. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a full half of the labels you see. On the, uh, or, you know, close to. And there's an element of that that feels unromantic. Nah, screw that. But at the same time... I totally disagree with as that. As long as it fills the vault. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, uh, I'm getting, this uh, is made... I'm not getting aggressive uh, peatiness. Kilbagan is uh, right next to Tullamore's distillery, okay. actually. About uh, 100 kilometers or so east of Dublin. It, it, smells, it, it smells like it's going to be a nice balance of um, sweetness and smoke. Now, here's the joke before you sip on it. Yeah. Right? This is a standard joke among people who really love this whiskey. Mm -hmm. Which is, oh, you like Connemara, huh? Which that means is, you actually like scotch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I get that. Right. And I get that, right? But I think it's a cheap shot. Because I think this is paying tribute to uh, the the history of Irish whiskey. Sure. Well, and the fact that Irish... And Scots don't hold ah. the entire... Court on on Pete. The fact that the Irish whiskey uh, are trying things out beyond just what you would expect from an Irish or returning whiskey. to the fact that Irish whiskey is kind of pigeonholed right now as a very narrow set of flavors. Yeah, the like, gateway yeah, to no, whiskey. I, I completely get that they would want to expand oh, beyond. Oh, this is good. Because you like scotch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is when the stereotype is true. That is nice. Right? Yeah. No, I get it. I totally get it. You you could you could replace this for a space side or a lowland scotch and you would totally get away with it. Yeah, I feel here's the thing, it feels like there's There's still some like biscuity notes in there though. To me like a trick okay, hang on. Yeah. Let's try kill bacon. Yes. Let's do that. And two more. <laughs> You're getting greedy. Alright. So here's the thing with this. Conamara. Okay, so yeah, I'm not you fin. I'm gonna let you finish. I'm, hold on, but Conamara is hold on, hold the best you. whiskey ever made. <laughs> I'm gonna let you finish. Beyonce should have won. <laughs> but Beyonce should have won. This is the Kilbagan classic, just a standard Kilbagan made at the same distillery, right? As this. So the Conamara. 
To me, this feels like two wildly different whiskeys blended together. One sweet and friendly and one smoky. Oh, so they're not really uh, fully married together yes. sufficiently to become one whiskey. Yes. It okay, hang like, on. With that thought, I'm yeah. gonna try I'm gonna try it again. Okay. Mm. See, okay, so I'm not getting that. Yeah. But it's possible that's because this is video four. <laughs> is it? Have we gone through that many? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think we have a drinking problem. Yeah, I don't have a drinking problem, except when I can't find a drink. <laughs> Thank, thanks to Tom Waits for that quote. Did you dust that one off? No, that's Tom Waits. You don't have to dust anything off. Oh, see, that's traditional Irish whiskey right there. Now we're trying Kilbegan. Yeah, this feels Kilbegan. Now I see where the peat comes from? It feels like this to me is like Kilbegan with peat added on top. What if we took our Kilbegan and added some peaty whiskey to it? Let's do that. To see if we could recreate Connemara. So here's the question. What kind of peat is it? Is it a heavy oily peat mm. or is it a light island peat? Mm. Right? So like a light island peat would be like Jura. This is uh, a light island peat. Tobermory. It's a light island peat. Okay. Tobermory. Yeah. So we're going to take Kilbegan. Make sure you put your this is like Mara Mara. down. Yeah. We're taking Kilbegan and we're going to add a dash of Tobermory. Okay. Now before we do that, could you get one more glass? This yeah. is how I keep you from stealing Yeah. Try the Tobermory to make sure that this is the lighter peat you were thinking of. So this is the glass. This is how you, you blend crap on a moment's notice. So I'm trying the... This is the clean one. Okay. Okay. Try the Tobermory yeah, just to nothing. see. Yeah, just to see if it's the right kind of peat. That's all we're checking for. I don't know, man. I don't know. I think the Konamara peat is more aggressive than that. I think maybe some Jura. Really? I do. I think maybe some Jura. I'm willing to take your word for it. We're gonna, we're gonna Jura. We're gonna dial this in. I don't know. I don't care how many whiskeys it takes. <laughs> we're gonna get this. I'll right. take one for the team. We're gonna get All right. this. This right. is Jura Superstition. Right. Here we go. No, this is the uh, same glass. All right. Here you go. Try that one. No, this is different. Totally different. I think it is closer. We're not quite there yet. No, that's it. Ah, that's it. It really is. You know you. You know you. It's, <laughs> it's there's really, no denying. That's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Jura on top of the Kilbegan, right? And we're you saying, really didn't try much of that Kilbegan beforehand. No, I did. I know. I know what's up. I got this. Okay, hang on. We're coming back to it. So this is what Konamora. First? Yeah, I gotta keep them. Wait, which hand is your Kilbegan in? Oh, this is my Kilbegan and okay. Jura. Kilbegan or Jura? Kilbegan. Right, so I'm uh, going Jura. back to the Konamara. Wait, wait, wait. Do you your really? Your Kilbegan Jura is in your right hand. Right. Okay, got it. Konamara, Kilbegan Jura. Yeah. Alright, so Konamara. No, oh, it's smokier. It's smokier. I misjudged. I think you need to put in more Jura. Oh, it's close, actually. No, we're getting there. In, in taste. It's not close in smell. So, seven drops of Laphroaig and we're there. Oh! Yeah. Yeah, we need some straight up peat. Oh, not Laphroaig. What? Ardbeg 10. Oh, Ardbeg 10. Okay. Okay. We're going to use Ardbeg 10, and we're going to use a glass eyedropper. Yeah, I mean, it's just, that'll take you so smoky and peaty so quickly. Yeah, smell that. Wait, now I don't remember which one was my Kilbegan. Okay. Alright, so Konamara. Right. Konamara. And Kilbegan and a bunch of other crap. Oh, that's pretty close. Yes, that is close. <laughs> this, this is more biscuity. It is more biscuity. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah. Not quite as smoky, more biscuity, but directionally it's there. Now, our original theory was um, I said this didn't feel quite as married. It felt like two different whiskeys that weren't married quite 
uh, entirely. I feel like it's something sweet and something smoky mm -hmm. sitting on top. This is our creation. Our creation is this something which that, we'll call Jeff. Yeah. It also doesn't feel married together. I think we need to add more whiskey. <laughs> I will put every whiskey in this vault, <laughs> in that glass, for the sake of getting They're this They're right. pretty close. They are close, uh, and it doesn't, here's, it may just be the fact that the, the sweet, the Conamara is smokier. The sweet end of the flavor uh, spectrum, mm -hmm. and that they're so wildly different that even if you can get them balanced enough to experience both flavors, they're never going to feel like they're combined into yeah. one singular. This is like a cover band. Of a really famous artist. It's like no matter how much they sound like the original, right. they're still not the original. Now, there, <laughs> I'm off the top of my head, the one whiskey that really, uh, I think, does a fantastic job of marrying wildly, excuse me, different flavors is um, Lagavulin, because it's not a sweet end, yeah. of the, end of the spectrum. It's a minty end of the spectrum. I buy that. You it's, get the mintiness. Lagavulin has an experience. We'll do that next video. Okay. Lagavulin has the weirdest experience, and we'll compare the Lagavulin Classic 16 to the Distiller's Edition. Right. But, um... You get the smokiness. Yeah. But you also get the mintiness. But at the very the end, it just yeah. lifts off. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody's reviewing Lagavulin 16, but... If you haven't watched uh, Nick Offerman's That's Not Lagavulin video, <laughs> do yourself a favor. Go watch it. Yeah, maybe we'll link that in here. All right. If people care enough to do I that. think we've done enough. Yeah, it's a public service is what we do here. Yeah. Yeah. Did we, we didn't get the comments again. I feel bad. We read comments. Comment more. Sure. We Not actually more. read them and laugh about them or make fun of them. Yeah. <laughs> he does. I appreciate that. <laughs> and your time. I'm respectful of that. <laughs> you did that with a straight face. <laughs> All right. Till tomorrow, man. You're crazy. Stay this side of legal. May you return before we have time to miss you. Cheers. Also, <laughs> comment, subscribe, whatever the <laughs> you're supposed to do on the <laughs> mother piece of <laughs>